Hello, hey, hi everyone. Uh, very uh, good afternoon to all our attendees to our MIS lunchtime webinar again. Uh, today is our thirteenth day of our MIS lunchtime webinar, and thanks so much for being here with us today. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I need to apologize to some of our attendees here, uh, and um, I think uh, during my last session, I actually said uh, yesterday. In fact. <laughs> I didn't even know yesterday was a public holiday. Now, this is the effect of the lockdown period. In fact, uh, I was discussing with our today's speaker, Ivan, earlier on. Uh, it seems like every day is a work day for us, uh, especially when we are working from home. And in fact, it's even more intense right now that you're working from, from home that you know, it's sort of lost track of the days and time. So yesterday uh, was Visa Day. So I hope everyone had a great holiday uh, yesterday, uh, you know, uh, pro properly rested, in fact. Um, and our next sessions will be on this coming Monday. Now, just in case you have to say tomorrow, please refer it to Monday itself. Okay, right. Uh, so as you can see on our screen right now, this is the second series of our lunchtime webinar where we have the suite of uh, top speakers and who are also top trainers uh, with the Marketing Institute of Singapore. So today, we are certainly very, very uh, glad to actually have Mr. Ivan Wong. Uh, now, Ivan Wong is, is no one newer uh, in the area of digital marketing. Uh, especially as a trainer itself. Okay, uh, so, you know, we're certainly very glad to actually have him uh, to share with, with us today on the topic on what uh, measures what matters online. Now, um, you know, as, as marketers, uh, measuring ROI is important. So, uh, to actually be able to track the results online, especially you need certain techniques, okay? Um, so, this is where I think we will be able to hear from Ivan itself on how we can uh, go about doing that. Okay, all right, so uh, next. Right, uh, as, you, as you know, MIS, we're actually a not-for-profit body itself. We have existed for the past 46 years. All right, so, um, so we would like you to also help us to populate our uh, lunchtime webinar, all right? So please go on to our Marketing Institute of Singapore Facebook page click on the like and then at the same time help us to also uh, because we're going on live on Facebook live and YouTube live right so do help us to actually promote it through your Facebook to your fans okay all right uh, so in this way you'll be able to benefit more people through our initiative all right so do help us please uh, even after the sessions you can also go on to the Facebook itself our Facebook and our YouTube channels if you miss out on some of the speakers uh, over the past 11 sessions, you can always catch up on some of those sessions on our YouTube channels. Okay. Now, as you know, um, that MIS, we also have our executive development program. Here is where we value add to the community by offering executive training courses, which, is, which runs from one day to four days program. All right. So there are some of the programs that are being run on one day, two days, three days, or even four days. For those, uh, for those that are much more intense program, we, uh, we usually run it on three to four days. So do check out on our Marketing uh, Institute of Singapore Executive Development Program. Um, we have over 120 over courses running over nine disciplines in sales, events management, leadership, marketing, business management, communications, service excellence, human capital management, and personal effectiveness. So nine broad categories. Um, so Ivan, it's actually one of our very uh, established trainer uh, with MIS for many, many years uh, in the area of digital marketing itself. So do look out for his courses coming on, okay? Now, of course, like what I said, a lot of, uh, in fact, during my networking and things like that, um, you know, when, when I, whenever we mention about Marketing Institute of Singapore, the, the, the very first thing that comes uh, from uh, you know, the discussion uh, during networking is that MIS, we know you as a provider of for your diploma courses. Uh, so yes, we do. Uh, can I have the previous slide, please? Thanks. Um, yeah, we do offer our diploma courses. Uh, in fact, our ever popular diploma courses is actually the Diploma in Sales and Marketing, which have, we have been running for 20 over years, uh, close to 30 years, in fact. So, uh, and then we also have our Digital Diploma in Digital Marketing. So here you are, if you are a marketeer, uh, or if you do not have the knowledge in terms of digital marketing, it would be great for you to pick up an advanced diploma in digital marketing. All right, so um, it's all done on part-time. Uh, so 
to make it easy even for those uh, the working adults or the working folks itself, um, the, the schedules that are being run actually fits into almost anyone, if not everyone's uh, working schedule. So please look out for this. Um, you can also look at our diploma in business. Um, and our MIS Business School currently for all these programs we are open for registration. Do reach out to us via the telephone number. If not, look out for our web page or website uh, for more information. Now, I always believe you know, upgrading is most important, uh, especially post-COVID. You need to actually equip yourself with new skills. And digital marketing will certainly be something that will be taking on a big role uh, in today's uh, environment, post-COVID. As you can see, even uh, meetings are being conducted via uh, online, via digital media. So uh, looking at the technologies coming, especially with 5G itself, a lot of things can be done. So to arm yourself with a basic digital marketing knowledge would be essential and critical. I would advise, uh, perhaps, you know, if you do not have the time, you can also pick up our digital marketing executive training courses. Uh, where we offer on a chunk uh, breakdown on about two to three days courses running to equip yourself with some of their digital marketing skills. Right, let's go on the next slide. Please. Okay, um, in order for you to actually enjoy the full benefit of uh, MIS, you can always join us as a member. Now we do have our associate members for our local community and for international uh, members, we do have a international members category where you can join as our international associate members. So do look out for more. So as a member itself, you are able to enjoy up to 30% discount on our virtual learning course. So courses. So I think that's a great value besides uh, all the other values on, on uh, coming for our events. Uh, we, we usually have our guru talks and our networking events itself. So you're always welcome. Uh, and whenever we have our conferences, uh, you're also invited to all this. So it's a small token to pay uh, being our associate member itself. All right, so do look out for uh, more on, on uh, how to sign up on our associate membership. And uh, for this period of time uh, to support the uh, lockdown period, uh, Stay Home SG itself. In fact, MIS, we will be giving out free uh, associate membership. Okay, now if you want to find out more, you can always contact the telephone number, uh, Ms. Judy Ko from MIS and Mr. Mr. Agil Chang. All right, both numbers are being flashed online right now. So after these sessions, you can always visit our website or our Facebook to look up for more on how you can join us. Um, and we're giving it free for now, okay? To support uh, you know, all those that are during the lockdown period stuff to enjoy uh, the discount uh, over the courses that are running during this lockdown period. Now, of course, we're running a mass donation. I think I've been, I've been talking about this over the past 12 sessions. And uh, we're glad to know that our, our government is uh, giving out our a series of, sorry, third uh, must to, to all Singaporean right now to ensure that we are safe. Um, but that is not happening in uh, some of the other countries, especially the ASEAN region. So uh, we are doing our very bit in, uh, in actually benefiting the community, especially for Philippines. So we are doing a mass donation drive right now uh, where we will be sending the masks that are being donated by you, by all of you out there, or by the community of Singapore to the ASEAN countries such as Philippines. Our first stop will be in Philippines. Now, in Philippines itself, we know, you know not all of them are actually equipped with masks right now. The very basic necessity in terms of uh, fighting COVID virus. Uh, so, <clears throat> so we would like to actually uh, appear to you, you know, help us in this donation drive. We managed to get a box of masks, uh, 50 masks uh, for $20. So this is where you can help us uh, do check out on, on how you can actually get hold of uh, the donation drive. And then uh, you can just donate $20. You'll be able to benefit 50 packs. All right. So we make it easy for you. You can just uh, lock on or you can call the number, the same two numbers, Judy and Agar itself, uh, to find out more on how you can actually help us in this mass donation. Next. Okay, great. <clears throat> Back to our lifestyle webinar. Now, um, as you know, you know, uh, in fact, a lot of uh, advertising are being done on online right now, uh, on social media. Now, how to track them? Uh, this is where it's, it's quite technical sometimes, you know. Uh, if you don't know it, then you won't know how to do it. 
All right, and especially now we are looking at uh, digital uh, versus traditional. It's almost like a 50-50 platform. And I would see even after the post-COVID period uh, that you know the digital platform will take on more, replacing the traditional media itself. All right, so uh, now Ivan's is going to touch on measure what matters online, which is, he will be showing you on some of the techniques. Uh, um, I, I think it's important. It's certainly very important of whatever things that you do when you're doing online stuff, especially in, in today's uh, context, we are actually bombarded by a lot of data and information. All right, so how can we see out those that are relevant and those that are not? So imagine, you know, when you are pitching a proposal to a client itself, you can tell them how great your business is, but you don't have any data or numbers to prove it online. So how do you, uh, how, how do you actually determine if the business has been showing consistent uh, and excellent results over time, especially on digital media? So in order to provide a stronger pitch to our clients, uh, investors, there must be a certain kind of metrics to be used to measure the actual, actual performance uh, and, and to look out for opportunities to grow the business further. So that's where you know, the key performer index actually comes into play. So in terms of sales, telemarketing, or even content writing uh, being part of the KP, uh, KPI, uh, especially when it comes to online marketing strategy, now uh, this is also one of the ways to track whether you are successful in terms of running the campaign online. All right, so I think some of the key performance a uh, key performance index uh, to consider, especially when it comes to online, will be the re uh, referral traffic, uh, referral traffic, page views, uh, average time spent on your website, uh, click-through rate, and many more. So thus, measuring your e-commerce and marketing performance is the key to actually help you to make a good decision or sound decision and to compare what is working and what's not. So uh, now you're not hearing from me today. Okay? You're not here to hear from me. You're here to hear from our marketing our digital marketing guru, Ivan Wong. So at this point of time, please help me to give a round of applause to Mr. Ivan Wong to come uh, on board uh, to share with us more. Okay. Hi, Ivan. Ivan, hi. Great to have you with us today. Okay, good so... Good afternoon, Roger. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for wanting to come by despite of your heavy schedules. Now, um, a point to note, right? Uh, let me, uh, in fact, uh, tell you more about Ivan. Uh. Um, Ivan itself, uh, like what we said, is uh, no one new in the area of uh, trainer as a trainer in the digital marketing stuff. He has over 20 years of experience in digital marketing, conversion optimization, digital analytics and digital science from both being a client and within the agency environment. Now, he's also a certified accountant and programmer by training. Wow. Okay. All right. So currently... Ivan is a digital marketing consultant and a adjunct lecturer with SME, uh, SIM uh, and Singapore Poly. He's also a certified adult educator uh, by WSQ Singapore. And is also one of those very few, he was one of those very few Google appointed regional trainers that uh, conducting uh, the official Google ads, Google analytics and mobile advertising courses. Okay. Now, um, Ivan has also managed the marketing and analytics from some of the largest websites in Singapore and have been a consultant for leading digital properties, including the Singapore Tourism Board, uh, the, the, uh, the Acazon, uh, Decathlon, sorry, uh, Hotels.com, Pies, Hospitality, Hyatt, Legoland Malaysia, and Resort World Sentosa. All right, I think uh, his, accolades, uh, his accolades and his credentials speaks volume on, on, uh, on his background itself. So, Let's invite Ivan into the room again, and then Ivan, please take it on, right, on your on sharing with us on measuring what matters online. Thanks, Ivan. Take it on. Thanks, Roger. All right, and uh, appreciate your kind words and uh, uh, opportunity to speak today. So, everyone, welcome once again to uh, this web lunchtime webinar on measuring what matters. Uh, I must say, I really appreciate Roger's uh, time, right? His dedication every day to host these sessions. Uh, I understand he's, he's feeling a bit under the weather today, even, uh, you know, but uh, the program must go on, right? So thank you, Roger. Uh, and let's get straight into the program so that uh, I can cover what I want to share. And it's going to be interactive session. So feel free to ask um, questions. You can type your questions into chat or preferably into the Q&A um, box. Right, so you should have a Q&A button available in your uh, Zoom screen. 
Okay, I'm just going to share my slides right now. So we're going to cover today how Google Analytics, Tech Manager and Data Studio can work together to help you understand what's really happening around your business. Um, when I say around your business, I, I am primarily referring to your online or digital business because Google Analytics is a digital measurement tool. But later on, we'll see that it can also measure uh, to a large uh, degree um, the impact of campaigns you're running both offline as well as on online. So this is um, a segment that is a subset of uh, the training that we run at MIS. Right? So there's a full digital measurement masterclass where uh, we take participants hands-on through uh, using all these tools. So I'd like you all to have the opportunity to um, experiment and, and go hands-on yourself. So I'm sharing a demo login uh, to the three platforms we're going to use today, like Google Analytics, Search Console, and Data Studio. Right, so feel free to take down these details. And later on, when I'm walking through the platform, uh, if you want to, you can also uh, log in on your end using the credentials here. And you will be able to see the same things that I'm seeing on the screen. So I apologize, I cannot pause uh, or help you troubleshoot uh, due to the um, nature of this short session. Right, but you're welcome to follow along. So in the current situation, um, with all of us, or at least most of us taking this, uh, watching this uh, webinar from home, um, right, it's, it's um, not business as usual, right? And we find, uh, as Roger has mentioned, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, activities have uh, gone online, gone digital during this period of um, circuit breaker. Uh, as a business, the government right, is also providing lots of incentives and as well as uh, grants. Um, most recently, right at the start of April, there's a new release of grants for businesses to uh, embark on e-commerce uh, ventures. Right, So uh, you can now start selling um, locally or even to um, the regional markets and receive subsidies and grants uh, from the government to do so. So it's a very good time, right? Uh, if you're embarking on e-commerce, if you're revamping your website, or if you're starting up uh, a new business, um, most of the time you're going to have a web presence. And it's very important for you to understand how your web, pro how your web presence right, is uh, working for your business. At the end of the day though, um, it's not about us, right? It's not about our uh, website. It's about our customer and how we can best serve them. So today, customers come in many, many different uh, shapes, sizes, demographics, psychographics, uh, different interests and different wants and needs. So Google Analytics, which is a platform I'm talking about today, is one way for you to better understand who the customer is um, and what's the best time and what's the best content and what's the best offer uh, to present to them as they are searching or browsing uh, information online. So the customers today use multiple channels to interact with your business and many other businesses. It can range from doing a search in, doing a search in Google, uh, to email marketing, um, to social media, browsing, uh, watching videos on Netflix or YouTube, right? Or it can also even be reading offline newspapers or magazines, uh, walking around, exercising, and looking at the billboards on uh, at the uh, uh, bus, bus stops, right? So all these are opportunities, right, for you to advertise, uh, to present your brand to the customers. So this is a typical uh, perspective from a business of how you can connect to your customer. So a customer who is browsing online uh, can view your ad when they're searching for a product, right? So for example, if they're searching for, um, yoga mats, right? So many people are taking up exercise from home, right? In this, uh, in this period. And quite a few people are um, starting uh, yoga or Pilates classes or uh, some other kinds of workout, right? So maybe they need to get a yoga mat, right? So they can uh, practice at home. So they search for yoga mats and your, they see your advertisement and they like what you're advertising. So they click on the link and land on your website. So this will, what, 
we will be what we normally call the digital marketing phase, right, of uh, your customer experience. Now, once they land on the website, the customer will be able to browse uh, your products and services, find out more about your business, and um, they can decide then, do I want to, to find out more? Do I want to stay on and read more? Or maybe this product uh, is not suitable for me, right? So I'm going to go back and continue my research. So once you're on your website, right, Google Analytics takes over. And this is the digital analytics space. So you can understand uh, where your customer is coming from, what they're doing on the website, how long do they stay, do they live straight away, what products and, and services are, are most interesting to them. Now, um, every visit has a start, right? So where do they come from? And every visit will have an end as well. So maybe they leave your website without purchasing anything. That's fine, right? So often uh, it takes several interactions or touch points before you can close a sale. Maybe they are ready to buy, right? So at the decision point, then we want to ask ourselves, did a conversion occur? Uh, yes or no? Right, so this is commonly referred to as the conversion space of the customer journey. And the nice thing right, about this flow I just showed you is that the whole flow here is, can be captured in Google Analytics. Right, so from the time that the customer sees your advertising to the time they land on the website, uh, what they do on the website, and finally here, whether they buy or they don't buy. So that's uh, typically uh, an e-commerce transaction, for example. All this is captured in Google Analytics. And you can measure optimize and repeat the process, right? For each and every customer that then wants to connect with your business. So without Google Analytics or some other analytics uh, working for you and your business, uh, you may not have a good idea of how effective your marketing and advertising is in reaching the right audience, right? So you may not know uh, whether the audience you are buying is of high quality or whether they're the wrong target audience. So the next few slides, I'm going to very quickly walk through with you um, the whole thought process right, in setting up what we call a measurement framework. So let's say you are an entrepreneur and you are thinking of starting up a new business. Um, then it all starts right with your idea. So what's your big idea? Translated then into what's the goal, right? So what's the, what's the purpose that you're setting up this business? Why are you setting it up? what's the purpose you're setting up the website for your business, right? So what's the purpose of the website? Is it to sell more products? Is it to brand yourself, position yourself in the minds of your customers, right? As a thought leader, as someone uh, who is expert in your field, right? So whether you're selling a product or service, uh, typically, right, the website always has a very clear purpose. So for MIS, right, uh, their website also is uh, full of information and the information is all there to fulfill, right? Their stated goals, right? Of uh, serving the marketers throughout Singapore and the region. So start with your goals, right? So why is your, why is your website exist? What are the goals of your website to generate uh, leads or sales? What are the KPIs? Uh, and Roger mentioned this earlier, the key performance indicators, right? So there, there's a whole range of KPIs you can uh, pick for your business, ranging from things like bounce rates, uh, time on site, amount of traffic you get, down to the more important ones, which are number of inquiries you get for your business, amount of sales you close your business, what's the average order value, what's the products purchase, what's the lifetime value of a customer, right? So all these are important for you to demonstrate, right, the effectiveness of your uh, marketing and sales. So once you have your goals, you can move on, right, to set up the measurement framework. So in this phase, we actually set up Google Analytics for our website so that we can measure and report and learn and optimize across all our marketing efforts. I'm going to cover how the setup works in the next slide. Um, sorry, not in the next slide, in a few slides time. Okay, so um, just keep this in mind. You have to do a one-time setup in order for Google Analytics to work on your website. Once Google Analytics is set up, right, then measure, analyze, and optimize your marketing across all channels, right? So we want to understand where we are. Perhaps we are doing uh, $30,000 in sales monthly currently. Then we can set our targets, right? Our performance targets. We want to increase sales by 20% month on month. 
and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to strongly advertise through Facebook uh, ads as well as uh, do content marketing or blogging, for example. Right? So the outcome of all this effort right, will be reflected in our performance reports. And of course, who wouldn't want more sales right, to, uh, and more leads to be generated from their marketing efforts? Everyone's budget is uh, limited. So we want to make sure that every dollar counts and measuring right is uh, a very good way to ensure that uh, we are more accountable for our marketing spend. By the way, um, if you stay on to the end of today's session, right, I will provide a link for you to access an agency dashboard um, that looks just like this. Right, consists of several screens. Uh, each one of them is uh, already expertly set up and crafted, right. So it's in a way a ready to go uh, agency agency performance report for your Google Analytics, right? So I'll give you the link to this so you can hit the ground running if you, are, if you are really have run, running Google Analytics and you want to start producing uh, nice reports like this. So Google Analytics starts with you analyzing your goals and then you go in to configure the tracking. Now, this is probably a site that most of us don't want to see, right? But what's this guy doing, right? He is in, a, he is in fact, right, uh, measuring and tracking. Right, so what is he measuring and tracking? Well, uh, well he's uh, measuring and tracking the speed, right? And identifying who is speeding on the roads, right? So what's his setup? Well, his setup is that little camera uh, that you see down there in the stand. So would he be able to measure without that setup? Uh, probably not, right? So he needs that equipment down there. So in the, way, in the same way, uh, to measure what's happening on a website, right? We need a camera like this. We need to do a setup. So the setup for Google Analytics consists of what we call tagging. There's two main methods of tagging. One is called tagging using the Google Analytics tag. And in this method, right, we simply insert a tag. Okay, so um, I'm using some technical jargon here. I'll just quickly explain, right? A tag is basically a piece of code, right? So you typically need to get a developer to help you to insert this code one time on your website, on every single page on the website. So for MIS, they've inserted the GA tag on every single page and that enables, right, that is basically the equipment that the website needs in order to capture the data, right, and have it available for reporting. So this is the first method. The second method, right, is using GTM, which is called Google Tag Manager. Conceptually, it's similar. You're still inserting a single piece of code on the website, but now GTM, right, is like an enhanced version, right, a souped up version of the normal tag. So with GTM, you can implement not just Google Analytics, you can also implement Facebook Analytics, Google Ads, and many other marketing platforms, all using one GTM tag. Right? So that is really the power of Google Tag Manager. You just have to engage your developer once to install this tag, and you can then install multiple systems on your website. And these systems um, are not limited to just the analytics, you can install uh, engagement tools such as chatbots, customer support widgets, uh, and, and many other kinds of widgets by using GTM. So GTM is a very powerful platform and it's what we cover uh, in the full training because uh, it is relatively technical. So there, there are some steps uh, to go through to set it up. But once you have uh, gone through the steps and mastered the fundamentals, right, it's a very uh, useful tool for any marketer, whether agency or client side, to, to understand. So in Tag Manager, what's happening is that by inserting the tags on your website, you're now able to transfer information back and forth between your website and the different marketing platforms. All right, so this is a um, uh, simplification right, of the whole uh, process. But yet, I want to just demonstrate to you that it is powerful but yet it is uh, simple to implement. But if you want to extend it, right, uh, it's actually very powerful. So it can enable you to exchange any kind of information that you want between your website and your marketing platforms, such as Google Analytics and the other uh, marketing platforms. Now um, let's uh, move away from getting technical. So once Analytics has been installed on the website, you are able to then access a whole wealth of information uh, let me just switch over briefly to my Google Analytics screen. Uh, and I'm going to take you through a quick walkthrough, right? Uh, on the kinds of information that you can see. 
when you have set up your Google Analytics. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over to my Chrome browser. Okay, just give me a second um, to log into my demo account. Okay, I'm just going to um, share my screen right now. So what you're what you're looking at right now is the Google Analytics interface, um, and this is on a live website, right? So this is a real live website called the Google Merchandise Store. Currently, there are forty one people who are browsing the products on this store. Right, so I can see exactly what products they are browsing as well. Right, switching from real time to content. Right, so this is a list of uh, pages they're currently looking at on the website. I can switch to where are they coming from, right? So we call it traffic sources. So currently most of them uh, are visiting through SEO. It's called organic traffic, right? Or through uh, social media engagements from YouTube. I can even tell um, how many sales I'm generating at this point in time, right? So how many people have started the checkout process? How many people have actually purchased a product on this website? So this is one of the many reports that you have in Google Analytics. I'm now going to open up one more section uh, called audience. So in audience, right, I can have a deep dive into locations. So which countries are my visitors coming from? All right, so you see the, for the past seven days, 37% um, of the traffic right, has come from the United States. The next biggest referral of traffic is from India, followed by the UK and Canada. Right, so this is important if you are operating a business regionally or worldwide, you can understand how effective your methods are at attracting the global customer. I can drill in even further. Right, so now I have the country. I can drill in into the specific behavior of the users in terms of how many of them are first-time visitors or repeat visitors to my website. I can understand the demographics, right? What is the breakdown between, uh, for example, male, female, or the age group, right? So you can see here that the majority of the visitors to this e-commerce website are in the bracket 25 to 34 years old. So this is uh, useful information because I can then understand, right? For this age group, which my current marketing efforts is uh, attracting, are they converting well on my website? Are they my real target audience? Or is my target audience perhaps an older crowd? If I'm targeting millennials, right, then I'll say this, target, this targeting is uh, spot on. So I just have to understand then how are my offers converting? Am I generating sales and engagement with this target audience? I can also drill into their specific interests. Right, so these are all based on their browsing behavior online. Google shares with you what are the specific interests of this audience that's visiting your, visiting your website? So from here, I can see that uh, majority of them have indicated shop that they are interested in shopping, followed by media and entertainment and technology. Right? So this again helps you to take a deeper dive and segment your audience so that you can better focus your marketing efforts. So there's many, many other reports uh, which are available, uh, which you can go through on your own time using the demo login and also which we cover in our full masterclass. I'm going to switch back to um, the slides right now. So in the short demo test, I showed you, right, there's so much data available in your Google Analytics. Maybe you're curious, how does Google get this information? How does it know, right, whether the visitor to your site is male or female? what they're interested in, what's their age group. So Google, like Facebook, is uh, one of the two biggest aggregators of data in the world, right, today. And Google gets its data from a variety of sources. So one big source of data is all the Google products that you and I use on a daily basis. Many of us, if not most of us, have, have a Gmail account or a YouTube account, right? And these accounts, right, uh, provide rich sources of data to uh, Google for them to enrich their data. Uh, even if you don't own a Gmail or use a Google service, 
there's a something called the double click cookie. Okay, cookie, right? So yeah, cookie is not this cookie, right? But uh, I just like this picture. Uh, cookie is a technical word for something like a text file, text file, right? So basically it's a little file that's stored on your computer whenever you are browsing different websites across the internet. So in this little text file, uh, Google right, will, will store all your browsing preferences. So let's say you tend to browse websites, right? Uh, with uh, sports products, then Google will identify, oh, this person's interested in sports, right? And specifically in this kinds of uh, sports in tennis uh, related uh, products and, and services. So all that will be stored right in this double click cookie. And this information is then shared with uh, Google Analytics uh, so that you are able to see what are the interests and uh, affinity audiences uh, who are visiting your website. So this is a very, very rich source of data. Uh, and it's the reason that Google can provide such targeted advertising, right? So which drives the majority of its revenue today, right? So Google gets the majority of its revenue through its ad advertising network. And the reason why it's effective is because of uh, targeting options gleaned from data such as this. If you want to check for yourself, you can Google for Google Ad Settings. Click on the first result. Sign in with your personal uh, Gmail address. Okay, and you'll be brought to a screen where Google will show you the data is captured for you. So I'm showing you here the data on one of my uh, main Google accounts. It tells me the gender, it tells me my age group. Uh, I can tell you that the age group is, is, is very accurate. Uh, why? Because when you first sign up for Gmail, for example, Google asks you for your birth date, right? So uh, if you didn't lie, and if you didn't lie about your gender, then Google has all this basic information about you. Uh, it also will tell you about the kinds of the websites, right? And interests that you are interested in based on your surfing habits. Right? So you can try this for yourself, right? Uh, Google for Google Ad Settings, log in and see for yourself, right? Uh, what Google has captured about you because this same information is being used to show targeted ads to you as you are browsing the internet. And this same information is being shared uh, with Google Analytics. So if you are running Google Analytics on your website, you're able to access uh, this demographic and interest data because Google is sharing this today with all Google Analytics owners. Right, so um, now I want to move on into the scenario where you have set up Google Analytics. Uh, it's properly set up and you're receiving uh, lots of data and you are able to now um, understand right how customers are broadly using a website how much time they're spending on a site whether they're converting and so on but so far we've been looking at google analytics from a ad hoc basis right i've logged into google analytics i just did some uh, random reporting for you so that's useful right for what we call exploratory analysis where there's uh, want to explore a google analytics account and um, ask questions right, and look for answers in our data. But what if we want to have a more structured way towards uh, analyzing our performance? So that's when reporting and dashboarding and visualizing data is important. Google provides a dashboarding platform called Data Studio. Uh, the good news is that this platform is free to use as well. Um, and this platform provides you the ability to visualize your data using nice charts and uh, infographic like widgets. And if you set this up properly, you don't even have to do any additional work. You can schedule your reports to run on a weekly or a monthly basis and have the, e the dashboard report emailed to you, right? So once you set it up, it couldn't be easier. In other words, you set up Google Analytics, you set up your uh, report, and I'm gonna share a few, uh, like I mentioned the agency report that I use. Uh, so once you set up the report, you schedule it, and you will receive right on a weekly or monthly basis the report together with all the data and you can then use that in your uh, management uh, meetings or you can use that as an agency to send to your client so visualizing data is a um, very important aspect of making use of the data that we capture we know in today's um, situation with covid right occupying the headlines every day there's uh, been a much greater interest in um, data and data analytics and data visualization, right? So people are seeing through the data 
to try and understand right uh, different aspects of the this uh, infection outbreak, and to try and understand um, how we can best come at the, come to a solution, right? That will address uh, this uh, infection. So even while data scientists, right, uh, and uh, medical staff are working furiously, uh, this data analytics and data analysis, right, is something they can apply to many other areas of life as well. And in Singapore today, there's a very big um, surge in interest and demand in data science, right? So Data Studio, right, is a visualization platform. So it's a subset of this whole area called data science. It enables you to visualize the data that you have obtained uh, through your different business uh, and marketing platforms. So data that is properly uh, presented, right, in infographic or in a chart um, should be easy to understand, easy to explore, easy to drive, uh, derive insights from. Um, as, a, as a fun example, I'm showing you uh, a street park parking sign, right? And this is uh, currently how many countries implement their parking signs, right? So we have different overlapping zones and uh, different regulations for different kinds of vehicles at different times. So if I was to ask you, right, um, can I park for free on Sunday between 9 to 10 a.m.? Uh, would you be able to answer this at a glance? Right, so maybe uh, those of you who think yes, right, you can uh, raise your hands in the chat room, right? So those of you who think no, just leave your hands unraised. Oops, did I give the answer away? Sorry, I advanced the slide. <laughs> yeah, so here, right? So those of you who think yes, uh, raise your hands. Can you park on Sunday between 9 to 10 a.m. for free? Okay, so now I'm going to give you a different way of visualizing the data. It's the exact same information, but in a new visualization format. So now I'll ask you again, right? Can you park for free on Sunday between 9 to 10 a.m.? So I'm not sure if any of you are changing your yes or no votes, right? So we see that when the right visualization is used, right, data can be made much easier to access, to understand, and to analyze, and to act on. Another example, right, so there are different aspects of visualization, visualization which are important. If I ask you to count the number of eights in this table, right, at a glance, could you do it? How about now? Is it easier if I color them for you? All right, so this is one of um, several aspects of visualization in which it's important, right, to understand how we can use all these uh, different factors to make the data easier to understand and access. I'm going to show you an um, example of a world-class visualizer, um, world class visualizer, <laughs> visualizer in action. So it's a tongue twister. And um, this gentleman called Hans Rosling, right, is able to take data and translate it into meaningful insights. So let's just short watch uh, this video. Visualization is right at the heart of my own work too. I teach global health. And I know having the data is not enough. I have to show it in ways people both enjoy and understand. Now, I'm going to try something I've never done before. Animating the data in real space with a bit of technical assistance from the crew. So, here we go. First, an axis for health. Life expectancy from 25 years to 75 years. And down here, an axis for wealth, income per person. Four hundred, four thousand, and forty thousand dollars. So down here is poor and sick, and up here is rich and healthy. Now I'm going to visualization. Oh, sorry, right at the heart what happened of here? My own um, okay. An access for wealth, income per person, four hundred, four thousand, and forty thousand dollars. So down here is poor and sick, 
and up here is rich and healthy. Now, I'm going to show you the world 200 years ago in 1810. Here come all the countries. Europe brown, Asia red, Middle East green, Africa south of Sahara blue, and the Americas yellow. And the size of the country bubble showed the size of the population. And in 1810, it was pretty crowded down there, wasn't it? All countries were sick and poor. Life expectancy were below 40 in all countries. And only the UK and the Netherlands were slightly better off, but not much. And now, why start the world? The Industrial Revolution makes countries in Europe and elsewhere move away from the rest. But the colonized countries in Asia and Africa, they are stuck down there. And eventually, the Western countries get healthier and healthier. And now, we slow down to show the impact of the First World War and the Spanish flu epidemic. What a catastrophe! And now I speed up through the 1920s and the 1930s. And in spite of the Great Depression, Western countries forge on towards greater wealth and health. Japan and some others try to follow, but most countries stay down here. Now, after the tragedies of the Second World War, we stop a bit to look at the world in 1948. 1948 was a great year. The war was over. Sweet. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. Um, you can actually find his videos on YouTube as well, right? Should you want to watch the whole video. But I just wanted to give you an idea, right, of um, um, the power of using visualization when you also combine it with storytelling, right? So when combined together with storytelling, you can see that visualization is a very powerful medium to convey insights from the data that you have. And that brings me on right to the final segment for today's talk, um, which is the free agency dashboard. So uh, in the video that we just saw, Hans Rosling was using a type of chart called a bubble chart. Right? So a bubble chart is very effective at uh, explaining uh, variables along two planes. Right? So the size of the bubble, uh, the color of the bubble, and the x and y axis can all be used right, to explain to you the growth uh, across two different uh, dimensions. In this case, he was comparing the health and wealth, the average health and the average health um, and wealth. Sorry, the average health of someone in the country uh, compared to the average income in someone in the com in the country. All right, and uh, what he was showing is that uh, there is a, a correlation between uh, between health and wealth. Right, so the richer your average income is, uh, in general, the better. The, uh, the health uh, you have. So that's a very unfortunate uh, but uh, true fact. Right? So, and he uses this to explain how right, uh, we should really uh, help countries who don't have um, access right, to the same level of wealth and uh, health that comes, comes with it, help to lift the, the people out of the uh, poverty. So his name is Hans Rosling. I encourage you to Google and find out more about his, his talks. But let's uh, move on to our own um, dashboard here. So I'm going to click on this link to open up this dashboard in my browser. Okay, I just want to switch the share so you can see my screen again. Okay, so you should be able to see um, a dashboard on my screen. This is uh, what I get by clicking on the link earlier. And this dashboard shows you the performance um, of my Google Analytics. It's currently linked to um, the, the store which I showed you earlier, a real life e-commerce store called the Google Merchandise Store. But it can also be easily switched, right, to link to your own company's Google Analytics data. Right, so you can have your own data appearing in this dashboard and it consists of several tabs. So it's one tab for paid advertising performance. This tab is for SEO performance. This tab is for the performance of your e-commerce uh, store. This is uh, performance of your marketing by day. So it's using a heat map. So you can see visually uh, most of the visitors right, to this store come on Monday to Wednesday. 
uh, between the time of 6 o'clock to about 2 o'clock, right? So the darker the color on the heat map, uh, that means the more the concentration of traffic during that time. The same heat map, but now showing you uh, the sales as well overlaid. So yeah, I apologize. This will, be, this will appear very small on uh, your Zoom screen. Uh, but this is a useful report to understand, right? Firstly, when do my visitors come most often to my website, right? So is it a weekday or a weekend? What time of the day do they, do they visit the most often? And most importantly, uh, when do they actually make the purchases of products, right? So now I can see visually, right? With which days and which times of the day I'm generating the most traffic and the most sales from my e-commerce efforts. And this really helps me to narrow down uh, my targeting and uh, allocate my budgets for better performing campaigns. You can also add in your own custom visualizations, right? So here's a, like a, a buffet of different kinds of charts, including the same bubble chart that we saw uh, in Hans Rosing's video earlier, right? So all these charts are available. This whole platform is free, right? For, for you to use. It's a free platform for Google. Google. And how can you get started using this uh, dashboard? Well, on the top right of my screen, uh, it's a bit small, so I use my highlighter. When you visit this link, right, there's going to be a little button uh, that looks like um, a copy button, right? So it looks like um, two pieces of paper uh, uh, stuck together, right? So if you click on this button, right, this will copy this dashboard that you see into your own um, Data Studio account. So the very first time you click on the link, you will be prompted to uh, log into your Google account and you'll be prompted to uh, accept the terms and conditions for Data Studio. So if you just um, go through those, uh, that motion to set up your, your account, uh, accept the terms and conditions, you can then copy over this dashboard into your own account, link it to your own Google Analytics data for your business, and you can start seeing your own data appear in this uh, dashboard here. And it doesn't end here, right? This dashboard is not fixed. It is totally editable, right? So. At any time, let's say, let me go to my custom dashboard screen. At any time, I can edit this dashboard. And let's say I want to pull in another chart. Right, I can simply choose a chart widget I'm interested in. Right, let's say I want to do a line chart, right? So time series. Just click on it. And you literally draw it on the canvas. Yeah, so this is showing you here my traffic over time. Traffic is called sessions in Google Analytics, right? So you see it's as easy as that. And you can also make this your own. So you can click on the logo, the top left, and change the logo file, right? So I'm going to make this the MIS uh, monthly report, performance reporting dashboard for their website, right? So I just insert the MIS logo. And the last thing, right? So you can even automate the whole, um, reporting. So from here, I can click on um, share in the top right. There's a share button. Um, okay, no, that's the wrong button. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So not the share button, but the drop down arrow just to the right of the share button. Okay. And click on schedule email delivery. So this one, I can schedule the report to be emailed to me on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Right. So you don't even have to lift a finger. Once you set up your dashboard, right, and connected it to your Google Analytics, you can have this nice dashboard emailed to you. And now instead of having to log into Google Analytics every day, you can just have a glance of the key performing metrics of your business and see if there's any, any area that you need to dive deeper into. So I hope um, this helps you. Uh, for those of you who want to get started quickly, uh, you could use the dashboard like this, right, to, uh, to quickly jumpstart your reporting for your online business. And that brings me to the end of this session. Let me just switch back to my slides. All right. So again, I'll just leave this link for a second more. For those of you who want to get the dashboard, you can copy down the link. So thank you so much, right, for spending this one hour or so uh, with me and MIS today. Um, I'm going to now hand over, hand the, uh, hand the control back to Judy, right, or to Roger, and we're going to maybe have a Q&A session. Hi, Ivan. Uh, thanks for that um, very insightful and wonderful uh, sharing 
on the analytics stuff. Well, um, like what I uh, like what I've always said, you know, Ivan is always um, very uh, helpful in terms of helping us to understand more on the uh, on how we can actually do analytics, and this is this is just part of it, right? Um, um, in fact, if you really want to find out more, please come for Ivan's uh, online training courses uh, that are being offered uh, by MIS. Okay. Um, at this time, I think we let's go on to our Q and A. Um, so perhaps I will fire out the first questions. We do have a questions from Jovi, but let me fire out the first questions. Um, now, uh, Ivan, you know all this certainly it's a, it's very important, especially when it comes to um, the management uh, choice of uh, measuring the advertisement platform on, on online platform itself. Uh, do you see any uh, in, what? Um, are we looking at even more uh, with the implementation of 5G itself? Will you be? Uh, will that be any difference uh, in terms of the analytic reports uh, generated by Google? Um, you know, what is your take on this? Okay, uh, so I won't com comment so much on the implications of 5G in terms of the network and the uh, uh, you know the changes in user behavior that, that will bring about due to the high bandwidth. Uh, but with the availability of 5G, right, there's going to be a huge bandwidth available. Uh, and even mobile devices, which, which you are using today, right, will become even more effective uh, devices in future. So today, we're already doing a lot, if not most of our browsing and even transacting on the mobile. Uh, I believe in future with 5G, right, even more of that uh, behavior will be shifted to mobile devices. And Google Analytics is the perfect platform. Um, they are um, continuously upgrading the features. There's actually a new version of Google Analytics uh, called Google Web Plus App. And that version is catered specifically right, to uh, mobile devices and the different kinds of interactions that people can, uh, can, can do on mobile devices. Yeah, so I'm quite excited yeah, to see uh, what's the um, opportunities available in terms of measurement when we move towards uh, 5G and a more high level of usage of mobile devices and apps as well. Yeah, thanks. Um, like what I said, I think with the high bandwidth itself, we'll probably be looking even capturing more big data from across different devices or even convergence of devices. Okay, let's address to uh, the questions from the floor uh, by Ms. Jovi Tan. Now, Facebook Pixel could also collect information for us to do analysis. Well, would you say Facebook Pixel and Google Tag have the same function? If yes, should we just install both on, or, on our website or just either of them? Great question, Jovi. Um, I had one slide earlier on. Um, I'm not sure if I can show my slides just very quickly. Let me just do a very quick share. Okay. Yes, so um, in my slide, I highlighted how a tag management system such as Google Tag Manager enables you to implement multiple tags from different marketing platforms. And you have highlighted that Facebook provides their own tracking pixel. So it's precisely uh, this platform, Tag Manager, that lets you implement uh, multiple pixels. And the short answer to your question is, um, yes, you should implement all the different pixels from the different marketing platforms because you want to capture the behavior of your user across the different platforms. So Facebook will have their own set of user uh, data. Google will have their own set of user, user data. In order to unleash right, the power of this data, you need to implement the tracking pixels. Uh, so the, the, the only thing I'll add is that you should use a platform such as Tag Manager to efficiently manage the multiple tags from different uh, marketing platforms that you will likely have to implement. So I hope this answers your question. Yep. Um, thanks, uh, Ivan. Okay. Okay. Uh, from the attendance itself, if you've got more questions. Please feel free to actually uh, post them on the Q and A uh, column sec uh, panel. Um, okay. We should, we'll bring you to my next questions, uh, Ivan. Ivan, you know all this big data and analytics itself. It allows uh, us to actually goes into hyper personalization when it comes to uh, product planning, service offered. Uh, or even 
new product development. Stuff. Can you give us an example on on uh, how or probably one or two of those examples on how all this big analytics, uh, which allows you uh, or big data, which allows you, uh, you know, the analytics itself to to go into a hyper personalization uh, profile, and, uh, mm. and how are you able to actually use this uh, to be more effectively churning out your product and services targeting at individual? Okay. Uh, great question, and uh, because of the of the brevity of my talk today, right? I didn't manage to go beyond uh, segmented targeting. So I mentioned today in Google Analytics, you can understand your users at the segment level. I gave examples of breaking down by country, and then further down by demographics, right? Like male and female, and uh, age groups and interests. But you are mentioning hyper personalization. Uh, so typically in marketing, right? The ultimate uh, holy grail of uh, digital marketing is to be able to do what we call one-to-one -one marketing and omni-channel, one-to-one marketing across all channels. And to enable you to do that effectively, you have to have this concept of yeah, personalization or hyper-personalization. So Google Analytics, right, as a tool, provides you several features that help you understand the customer down to the individual level. But uh, it is more quantitative data. So it's more data based on numbers, right? So I can understand that you are male. I can understand... Uh, your age group. I can't really understand your sense, your sentiment, whether you are uh, happy or unhappy with my brand when you visit my website, right? For example, I can't really understand uh, how, how highly my brand features in your consideration set when you are buying a new product or service. So this additional uh, information, right, has to be com uh, captured from different sources of marketing platforms, right? So it could be through user surveys, it could be through uh, chatbots. It could be chatting with your customer service. It could be through uh, surveys on customer experience, right? Uh, maybe a customer experience score from 1 to 10. Uh, so all this data taken together, right, enables you to understand uh, the individual person's wants and needs and uh, his uh, affinity for your brand. Yeah. So Google Analytics is then one piece of the puzzle, the full puzzle. You must put together a full measurement platform combining all the systems. So the big data that you mentioned, you need to have a way uh, to sync together all the big data. The good news, right, is that if you have multiple sources of data, you can use a platform like Data Studio or a similar kind of um, dashboarding or aggregation, aggregation platform to give you a view across all your points of data. So you can better understand, right, how effective your marketing is, as, uh, including your personalized marketing. But uh, to that, I also add, uh, often it's, uh, only possible to do personalized marketing with uh, what we call marketing automation systems. So there's a, a further level of investment required uh, because those systems are typically more complex uh, uh, in functionality, more complex to set up as well. So there's uh, additional cost involved. But if you don't even have the basic level of measurement in place, right, then it's going to be difficult to jump straight to uh, personalization or hyper-personalization marketing. Right, so Google Analytics and the measurement framework is like the foundation for your house. After that, you can add all the special features to do uh, omni-channel, one-to-one uh, marketing. Great. Uh, I, I think, um, like what they said, I think hyper-personalization would probably take on in even a bigger way uh, when um, I think the, the bandwidth... In fact, it really needs a lot of infrastructures to back you up uh, in terms of uh, personalizing your uh, your campaign uh, yes a one to one level all right mm. thanks uh, ivan okay we've got a uh, questions coming from miss rogina say is there a optimal time to implement gtm especially for a new website uh, is it effective to have it in place form uh, sorry from the start or should gtm be implemented after a period of operations thanks for the question georgina uh, so georgina asks uh, when's the best time to implement GTM or Google Tag Manager, which is the alternative method of implementing Google Analytics I mentioned in my webinar. Um, it's best to implement it from the start. right? So it's actually not going to be uh, much more uh, work for your developer between implementing uh, GTM versus the, the normal method. right? So I highly recommend you consider GTM from the start because um, if not, right, Later on, you have to do a migration from your normal method to GTM, and that will actually uh, uh, make cost more work for your development team. So um, 
uh, migrate, implement from the start, enjoy all the benefits of GTM from uh, day one to day. That's my recommendation. Okay, good, good recommendation, uh, Ivan. Ivan, uh, next question will be from me. Um, we, we know we've been talking about digital marketing, digital marketing. What, what kind of skill set uh, would you need in order for you to take on as a digital marketer? Uh, because quite frankly, it's, it's really an industry that you know, everyone is looking for certifications. Uh, they're looking at, you know, uh, and, and sometimes to, for you to call yourself a digital marketer, itself, there isn't really a certification as per se. Uh, but it's coming up right now. So what do you think in your, in your opinion, in your point of view, uh, for you to be an effective digital marketer, what are the skill sets that you need or what are the courses uh, that you need to know uh, or you need to attend uh, in order for you to be effective? Especially catering, um, you know, to operate as an agency or a digital marketer within, within a company itself. Um, so maybe I'm a bit biased, but I think uh, that this measurement is a great point to start your digital, mar digital marketing journey, right? If you are um, in one of a few scenarios, let's say you are from a different uh, uh, business, I mean, uh, a different uh, job role and you want to transition into digital, digital marketing. Or let's say uh, you're currently doing some level of marketing, but you want to upgrade your skills uh, to the latest digital marketing uh, techniques. So I think measurement is actually... Um, one of the best entry points uh, because like I mentioned in my webinar, measurement starts with the big picture. It starts with the why for your business. It starts with the goals for your business and then further translates the goals into the tactics or channels that you use. So very often uh, as marketers, we, we, we start from the bottom up instead of the top down. By that, I mean, we start with a specific tactic, right? We say, oh, we need to do more SEO or we need to do more social media. Uh, so that our business will be successful. But that's really down to the channel or tactic level already. But you may not consider how does this uh, tactic fit into our overall strategy of building our brand and uh, driving awareness uh, across all the touch points with our customers, the only channel of hyper-personalization. That's why um, I think uh, it's very useful to start from measurement perspective. But in terms of the actual skill sets, um, there's a reason why Right, why MIS queries so many trainers and so many courses? Because yeah, there are many, many uh, deep skills required across uh, the different uh, vertical levels in digital marketing. Uh, but increasingly, right, there's a, there's a need for marketers uh, to be very broad in their skill set, right? So and in order for you to be uh, broad, you need to understand, we only have 24 hours in a day. You want to understand where to prioritize right, your time. And that's why I feel, again, uh, having understanding of measurement with starting with strategy, translating to goals, helps you understand um, where you should focus your time or where you should advise your clients to focus their time in terms of their digital, digital marketing. Once you have decided on that, then you can dive deeper into specific training. And for me, my own preference uh, today, uh, if it's a strategic training, it doesn't have to be hands-on, but if it's more um, tactical, if it's more channel focused, such as social media, uh, I would prefer a more hands-on approach. Uh, because I think there's no substitute for actually learning from doing. Yeah. So if you can get hands-on practice, if you can get some kind of internship, or if you can work using your skills on your own startup, or maybe provide your services you know, to, uh, to someone who can benefit from uh, what you're learning, I think all these are great ways uh, to learn. I understand uh, the diploma, right? Uh, provides a diploma level kind of training, provides practice over a longer period of time. So I, I prefer... Yeah, a bit more time for people to absorb uh, what they're learning and put it into practice. Okay, um, thanks Thanks for that answer. So, um, Ivan, what do you think? I think should everyone or anyone or anyone or everyone uh, should take up digital marketing? I think it, uh, it will be a very basic skill set, right? In your opinion, uh, you know, uh, must there be a certain segment of the workforce or should it be applied to everyone? That you should arm yourself with some form of digital marketing skill set. I should, I should uh, turn this question back to you, Roger. I think you are actually, <laughs> you are actually the, the best so person yeah, in the room to answer this question. 
right, well, I'm, uh, a, I'm, a, I'm a digital alien, so I was trying, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get, trying to, get yeah. on to be a digital uh, natives and stuff, but it's very difficult. Uh, especially when I, comes- maybe my question to you is should we even separate digital from marketing? Yeah, we should not. You know, in fact, it's a very integrated. Uh, mm. um, me in, in today's marketing context and stuff, uh, digital marketing is one of the key aspects when it comes to planning your marketing campaign. Any marketing campaign without digital marketing itself will not be effective. All right, so that's why uh, you know we're looking at, uh, in fact, uh, a large pool of traditional marketers like me. Uh, when it comes to digital marketing, we still have to learn. We have to continue to pick up courses uh, that are being offered out there, like Ivan's courses. Is one of those that I will really want to attend, and and in fact, I, uh, over the years I've actually picked up some courses uh, on executive training. I don't have time to actually go through a formal uh, academic qualifications when it comes to digital marketing, but still, yet uh, you know, knowing that it is existing, you don't have to know how to do it, but you know that there are certain ways or uh, that you can actually derive all this information from to allow you to make better decisions. So I think digital marketing certainly is an integrated. Uh, a very important role uh, to play uh, in the area of marketing, especially yep. marketing. Thank yeah. you. Those are my Thanks. thoughts as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Ivan. I think we've reached to the end of our sessions today. Really, thank you so much, Ivan. Um, Pleasure. And, thank you yeah, for having I, me. Like, like what I said, you know, Ivan is one of the, in fact, the, the digital marketer trainers that's able to actually articulate and able to put through very in a very crystal form uh, so that, you know, People like me, digital aliens or migrants, are able to pick up some form of training, all right, so that we are not being left out uh, in, in today's world, uh, in the, today's digital world itself. So please sign up for uh, Ivan's uh, uh, program, all right, and we'll be inviting Ivan again, you know, because uh, we'll be having our third and fourth series of speakers. So we do have uh, some of the requests uh, from our community to actually have Ivan on board to share even more on uh, digital digital platform. Thanks, Ivan, so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Thank thanks. you. Okay. Um, I, I think in today's format, right, uh, in fact, the government are highly promoting uh, companies to go on digital right now. So there are a lot of grants right now, especially with, uh, during this COVID-19 period, where you're seeing a lot of companies, um, you know, rendering themselves very ineffective right now if they don't have any form of digital uh, uh, connections with their, uh, with their consumers or with their customers. So this is where I think you should pick up on some of the grants, especially SME owners like me, uh, that you know use this period of time to beef up on your infrastructure. So I would highly advise that you know, for you uh, to know, would be, it would be good for you to actually attend some of these courses, uh, especially now online. And then you know how to properly map up your strategy in terms of going digital uh, in your company itself uh, and tapping on the government's grant. Now, our government are quite generous right now. In fact, they are really helping the business community and I really want to applaud our, our government and some of the uh, agencies out there, such as IMDA, uh, for mapping out uh, all these digital grants, uh, grants for digital campaign. All right, thank you. All right, well, we'll bring on to which we'll bring on to our series of speakers in uh, this series, our second series of lunchtime webinar. Tomorrow we are looking at uh, not tomorrow. You see, <laughs> it's on Monday. Tomorrow is Saturday. All right, we are, we'll be inviting Mr. Iwan Setawan, Pak Iwan Setawan. Now he will be uh, going on live Zoom uh, with us from Indonesia. Uh, hopefully in Jakarta itself, the bandwidth will be good. All right, we, which you'll be touching on the topic of marketing 4.0. Now, remember I said Iwan it's someone which I've, I've, I've actually I've come to know uh, for, about, for the past three years, four years coming. Uh, he's also, he has also co-opted with uh, Professor Kotler and Pak uh, Hermawan Katujaya of a couple of uh, books. Uh, I think one of them is actually the marketing 4.0. Um, as marketers itself, we've always ask ourselves, you know, what's there uh, to learn besides or beyond the traditional marketing? And of course, digital marketing being one of those important skills. So here's where you can actually hear from Iwan Stavad some of the strategies right now uh, that are being used and deployed uh, in, in marketing 4.0 itself. 
So I will really encourage any business owner, any marketers, uh, you know, if you want to learn something new out there, uh, not, not just the traditional uh, marketing skills that you have, to come for tomorrow's session. In fact, we'll be inviting Iwan Satawan to come to Singapore after the post-COVID to, to probably conduct more courses. But as for now, uh, you know, we will make his courses available online. All right. So, uh, Iwan actually graduated from the University of Ken Lox. Uh, he, he was, uh, in fact, uh, over there, that's where he came to in touch with uh, Professor Kotler, being one of his mentors, and uh, that's where the whole journey started uh, in terms of uh, writing uh, or publishing books uh, relating to marketing. So, I will highly encourage you to come on board to hear from him. And of course, on the 12th of May, it's where we will have Mr. Eden Ong, okay. Now, Eden uh, it's, it's a very interesting person. If you go to this Eden Ong's production on YouTube itself, now you'll be able to see a lot of his work, uh, uh, and, and, and he's great in terms of creating effective content, all right? And his followers, I, I, the last count is about half a million on his YouTube channel. So, you know, imagine if you can actually create a content where you have half a million of followers, uh, that, that locks on to your content and if it happens to be your company's uh, product or, or content channels, I think that'd be great, right? That is an excellent and great campaign. So, of course, he's not just talking about creating content. He's, uh, he will be talking about how to effectively create those content and relevant content. Okay, so, and of course, you are looking at also Miss Cecilia Sim, uh, a long-time trainer with uh, MIS itself which will be coming on on the 13th of May. She'll be talk, touching on the topic of proactively getting into the selling action. Now, Cecilia is it's a, uh, a very long-time trainer in, in, in MI stuff, and she's great in actually uh, articulating, articula uh, articulating the, the ways that you can actually push forward your selling skill, how to actually perfect your selling techniques itself. So I think uh, you will be able to pick up a lot from her. For those that are in sales, uh, industry do not miss out on this session and last on this series itself will be uh, by P, uh, Mr. P. Subramaniam on building brands with customers experience um, please don't miss out on this session I think he's going to share with you on how to actually build your customers experience to different touch points all right so I had a conversation with uh, uh, Mr. P. Subramaniam last night uh, which is very interesting the thing that, that he'll be presenting so not to miss this I would highly recommend all of Okay, and next slide, please. And of course, all this uh, are brought to you by our MIS executive development. So do look out on how you can actually progress and upgrade yourself uh, on our MIS created platform as in the executive development platform itself. Okay, now uh, these are the 12, uh, more than 120 courses. Of course, Ivan courses, uh, it's actually one of those courses that are highly being picked up by the community right now. So do look out for all these courses uh, on our MIS Executive Development website, okay? And of course, MIS, we do not just have public programs, we also have customers, uh, customized programs. So if your company needed some uh, program that you need to customize towards the need of the needs of your company itself, you can always approach our executive development, okay? All right, so next slide, please. Um, like what I've said in the beginning, uh, advanced diploma in digital marketing, I think that it's a critical skills for you to have, and uh, diploma in sales and marketing and diploma in business. So it's open for registration right now. So do look on, do look out, uh, look on to our Facebook or our website. And in fact, you can also reach us by the telephone number, uh, which is being flashed on the screen right now. Okay. And like what I said, we always welcome you to join us as a member. So uh, find out on how you can actually join us as an individual associate member itself. Um, like what we said, don't miss out this period of time where we are giving free membership. All right, so uh, the reason why we're giving it free is so that you can enjoy our online courses, okay, uh, at a discounted rate. So please come on board as our member and find out more on how you can actually gain from being our members, okay? So there are two numbers out there. Please call them, okay? Thank you. Next slide, please. Last but not least, I think we're touching on our mass donation drive. 
we are doing our, 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 our little bit uh, in, in terms of MIS itself in wanting to uh, contribute to the community not within Singapore alone but out of Singapore so that's where we are doing a mass donation drive a uh, simple $20 will be able to get you a box of masks which will be uh, given to the frontliner including the general uh, population in, in uh, Philippines right now that are unable to get even get hold of even a basic uh, protective gear such as a mask to protect against the virus. Now imagine today if you have to walk along the road and then you know you get into somewhere very crowded and yet you are not armed with your mask. Um, I think that's something that's quite worrying <laughs> and be quite worrying. So that's where uh, we are working with our Philippines counterpart to ensure that all these masks are being distributed to the uh, the underprivileged uh, community in Philippines right now. So do help us, okay, in, in this mass donation. Please find out more from the two telephones number out there. You can always uh, contribute um, by uh, getting a mask, getting a box of masks. Um, we will be uh, we will be paying for the cost of transportation to Philippines to ensure that our counterparts are able to execute. Okay, right. So we've come to today's uh, end, end of today's session. So please help us to share on your Facebook and on your social media. All right. Uh, you can always find our past uh, webinar sessions on our YouTube also. All right. So if you miss out, no worries. You can always uh, get back to our YouTube channel. Log on to our MIS YouTube channel itself. So that's all for today. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you so much for your great insights and your sharing sessions with us. And we'll see you on Monday. Same time at 12 30.